You are listening to a MetalExpressRadio.com interview. Enjoy. John Mayong, you're in the middle of uh, the, the 25th anniversary tour for, for Images and Words. It's not that long since you played in, in Oslo last time. Uh, did you plan this tour a long time ago? Well, it kind of just became like the thing to do. We were um, just kind of charting out what was uh, going to happen the next following year and and it just made sense to to come back to this period it feels feels really good to go back to a period where um, it was a real powerful moment it was like a kind of um, a whole new start that nobody saw coming um, pull me under took off on the radio and you know we went from like the base practicing in the basements of retail stores to all of a sudden being known around the world. It, it was very, um, very intense. It, it was just, uh, it, it was just like a, like a space shuttle launching. There was no looking back. It was just all kind of new, new ground, <clears throat> going to places, you know, like Japan, you know, all the different cities in Europe. Um, Basically, all of a sudden, just being thrust into the world and, and just, you know, traveling for, for two years. It was, um, it was a, it was a very st strong point in our career, for sure. Mm. And um, it feels good to revisit that on this tour. Mm. Yeah. Uh, it was a, a groundbreaking uh, album uh, for, for the genre. I guess you, you started the, the prog metal genre, maybe with that album or, or your first album. Um, did you understand back then when you released the album that this could be it? No, it was just obvious to us that this is what felt good to us. This is kind of what we do together uh, when we um, collectively put our... our uh, our minds together and and practice um you know ever since 85 86 when uh you know me and john went to uh, college and we met mike and we formed the band like it was just a very intense kind of uh work ethic that we maintained from 6 p.m to 12 p.m to 12 a.m every night monday through friday We would uh, always get together and write, and um, and we just kept doing it. And four years into it, um, uh, our first album came out, One Dreaming Day and I, on Mechanic Records. Mm. And that didn't really do all too much. And then four years later, uh, things started happening with Images and Words. But all throughout that period, you know, we <clears throat> maintained our work ethic, and uh, and it was just kind of what we did. Um, we didn't really know what was happening until it was happening. Um, how did you experience going f from uh, uh, an unknown band into this uh, big business? I mean, did you uh, keep up? Did you understand what was happening? Or, or did you... I mean, there are so many stories about uh, record companies that uh, rip you off and, and stuff like that. Uh, were you on, on top of the, uh, the, the business? Yes, it was... I mean, for us, it was very difficult in the beginning because originally we were going to be managed by Iron Maiden's management. Mm. Um, and like shortly right before the record came out, they decided not to manage us, like literally like weeks before. Right. So then, um, so then now we, we thought we had a firm base and a, and, and a place to kind of build from but now it was like oh well now we gotta reestablish who our manager is gonna be and but you know we just stick you know stuck to the plan uh we went on a tour we were just touring the country in a van and all of a sudden it just started happening <laughs> i remember just like uh after a show watching mtv and like seeing them playing us and then it was like wow You know, it's like it was like calling everybody up. You know, quick, turn on TV. Um, so uh, I would say the beginning was very much sort of 
just kind of getting the groundwork in, just kind of figuring out where where we stood, you know, just kind of making sure that we were doing the right thing, that everything was in place, but it was um, it was a challenge. When you look back at, on the album now, uh, when you listen through it, I mean, this is 25 years ago, uh, you have matured probably as musicians as well. Um, to many people, this uh, album is just outstanding, it, it's perfect. Uh, can you hear any, what can I say, immaturity uh, on that album compared to, to what you do now? Well, I, I think if you look back, you could always um, see things that maybe um, could have been different. But when things are happening in real time, um, it's more important to kind of go with the flow. Mm. Um, I, I think the the main difference between that album and what we do now is just you know, just our, our experience in in the business and um, just who we are as people. Um, I think musically it's pretty sound, pretty together. Yeah. Uh, I don't mind listening to it or playing it. And I th kind of think that um, <clears throat> that quality, I don't know if it does or not, if it has a lot to do with... Um, the success of the record, but but I know that with that record, it, it's not something that I get tired of listening to. Mm. So that's um, kind of a cool, kind of good benchmark to set out to kind of, you don't know if it's going to happen, but it, it's great when you do um, find a place and uh, musically and you listen back and um, it doesn't have that tiring effect. It's just, it's just there. Yeah. Yeah, and I think that record um, has that quality. Hmm. Yeah. I guess there are a lot of tracks, uh, well, at least some tracks on the album you haven't played for uh, a while. You usually play uh, the classics. Uh, what was it like to, to go back and rehearse uh, the whole album? It's like you, you all listened to the album and you, you came well prepared and you just ran through the songs, or what was the first um, rehearsal like uh, with the whole band playing the whole album? Well, the review process for me, wasn't much no. because you know the, that album's been with us for a while mm. um, so it was just kind of um, a real kind of uh, simple review process for me um, but for some of the others maybe it was a little bit more um, you know we just got together uh, before the tour did some pre-production and it all kind of fell into place yeah as long as Everyone is aware of what we're playing. Um, as long as everyone does their homework, it, it comes together fairly quickly. Mm. Yeah. Uh, what are your favorite tracks uh, uh, from the album? If anyone stands out. Favorite tracks. Um. I guess the whole thing is your baby, so it's hard to pick. Yeah. <laughs> well, I, I see it as just kind of. A period in time, yeah. Um, so, so it's hard to kind of just narrow one song. Understandable. Yeah. <laughs> uh, do, do you see um, people coming to to uh, the shows on this tour? They're they're coming back because it's a trip down uh, memory lane. Maybe they haven't been following the band since back then, but now that you're doing this album, they well maybe they were into back then. Now they're coming back to see your shows, or or do you think the audience is the same now as maybe the last tour? <clears throat> well, our, our audience has definitely grown for sure um, because people have grown up with us um, and have had children. Yeah. And <clears throat> their children have grown up in a household listening to Dream Theater. Um, so now families are coming out. So um, so we, we've, come, we, we've grown um, that way through just being a part of people's lives. And um, it's real great to see. So now that you, you uh, play the whole album live, do, do you stay true to, to the original versions? Pretty close. Yeah. Actually, with the part of um, 
some extended solo sections, like the other sector time. John has a uh, guitar spot. Um, it's pretty much pure to form. Mm. Yes. Mm. Uh, on your last tour, you, you did the whole The Astonishing album. That's a double album, so you have, you played the whole album, and that was it. Now you have room for uh, even more tracks. I've seen you actually close the show uh, with the Change of Seasons uh, mini-album, the, the whole thing. Who came up with uh, with that idea? Well, John put the set list together, and um, we are all happy with it. Um, and uh, coincidentally, it works out nicely playing Change of Seasons because originally the intent was to kind of have that as part of Images and Words, part of mm -hmm. that record. But um, <clears throat> towards the end of the recording process, uh, the record company wasn't so keen on getting that recorded. I'm not sure exactly why. Maybe it was like budgetary. We were running out of time in the studio. Um, <clears throat> and an extra 20 minutes um, was probably more than they maybe wanted to invest at the time or spend, you know. Yeah. I mean, back then, um, studios were $2,000 a day <laughs> to record. Times have changed. Um, <clears throat> yes, they've changed. <laughs> so, so maybe, that, maybe that was a consideration, and, and maybe the overall um, just the uh, there might have it might have had uh, something to do with wanting to keep the album at around an hour or two to kind of not overload the listener. Yeah. Um, and there's something to be said for that when you could, you know, listen to something, you know, on your way to school or on your way to work, and you have that sense of completion. It makes you want to listen to it again. Mm. So, um, so that's, uh, that was sort of the thinking, I think, yeah. behind that decision. Mm. Uh, do you stick more to the same uh, playlist uh, every night now than, than before? I remember back um, in the days, um, Portnoy used to, to email uh, the set list for the, the same night in the morning. Uh, so there could be a lot of changes from, from night to night. Uh, but now you stick more with the same uh, set list uh, every night throughout the tour? Yes. <clears throat> if you, we keep it fairly consistent, yeah, um, and it has its advantages in terms of just um, just everyone everyone falling into a groove, everyone kind of knowing what their moves are, mm. and as the tour progresses, you know that becomes embedded into everyone's sort of um, workflow during the show. I mean, for everyone, it it just becomes a piece, right? Even for <clears throat> you know, our modern engineer, or our front of house, our, our lighting director, like it's, it just, the whole show becomes this one piece that everyone has to perform. Mm. So, um, I enjoy that yeah. when everything flows. Yeah. And, and you get to really kind of, um, I don't know, you just feel very grounded uh, as, as, as the tour yeah. continues, that yeah. you kind of know what it is, what the expectations are. So, uh, what's next for, for Dream Theater? I mean, uh, you did The Astonishing, a huge project and an extensive tour, and now you're doing uh, this anniversary tour. Is it now uh, back to uh, to composing new material and recording a new album, or are you thinking about having <coughs> a break? Well, eventually. that That's going to be more towards the early of 2018 when we think about that. Mm. Um, this record will probably be... This tour will probably finish at the end of 2017. Yes, yeah, so, right. so, so the plan is to um, take a little time off, but to kind of continue and to kind of um, visit other parts of the world, like, like uh, well, well, we'll come back to Europe and then, and then going to Asia um, at some point, too. Mm. Uh, when you're preparing a new album, are you discussing that the direction uh, you want to take, or just that just happened? I mean, last time you did a, a rock opera, that's something completely different. But uh, did you talk about uh, uh, which direction to go for the next album? The plan is to um, get together and to kind of 
collectively work on everything, kind of like uh, the way we used to make records, mm. where it's it's all. I mean, train of thought was kind of like that too, where we we're just in a live setting, um, and getting away from uh, the uh, from writing in, in in a recording studio, because um, it's a more controlled environment where everything is mic'd and ready to go, and you're kind of working with headphone mixes. Um, it's a different it's a different chemistry, different energy level because of how you communicate with each other you know it's um whereas in a live setting you know it's more free you know yeah. you play play a loud chord do whatever you want experiment and then everyone sort of just reacts to what's happening um so i think we're going to be going more back towards that mm. yeah looking forward to see you tonight and um Uh, best of luck with the show and the rest of the tour and the next album. <laughs> Thank you very much. It was nice talking to you.